Human beings evolved on, on the surface of the Earth um, in a gravity field of what we call 1G, 1, 1 Earth gravity. Uh, and many things about the way our bodies work are, are sort of related to gravity. On Earth, we're using our muscles all the time. That keeps them strong. Uh, and so we, we can walk around. If, on the other hand, if you lie in bed for six months and then try and get up and, and walk around, that's much more difficult. And so on Pegasus, the astronauts will be flying through space for long periods of time. Um, and if you don't provide any countermeasures uh, or they don't do any exercise, their, their muscles will start to waste because they don't need to be that strong. One of the things you could do to try and keep your crews well when they're on their way to Mars or, or wherever you want to take them on your expedition is to, to take your own gravity with you uh, in the same way that we take our own light and heat and water and food with us at the moment uh, to, to take the gravity that they've left behind. You can see here these rotating modules which provide us with some gravity to help keep us in shape. This is point 0.5 G to be precise which is half Earth gravity. And here we have Zoe Lassard making up for the time she spends in zero G by exercising three hours a day. As Zoe will tell you, three hours a day keeps the muscles and bones from wasting away. Isn't that right Zoe? <laughs> Alright, let's take a look in Zoe's sleeping module. Temperature is, is, a, is a problem in space because uh, if, if you just think of a spacecraft such as maybe the International Space Station in Earth orbit, one side of it is exposed to the sun and the sun's rays will heat that up to about maybe uh, plus 250 degrees centigrade, so, so pretty hot. The other side of it is in complete dark, it's in, in eclipse, it can just see if you like the, the inky black void of space and so that gets very cold, that goes down to about minus 150 degrees centigrade so you see even in Earth orbit you've got a sort of three four hundred uh, degree temperature range across one spacecraft. The same applies to a, a spacecraft such as Pegasus uh, except that Pegasus is designed to, to, to travel you know very very close to the Sun so it's going to get much much hotter when it's going in towards Venus and at the same time it's designed also to travel to the outer solar system where there will be almost no heating by the Sun and the problem will then be keeping the spacecraft warm. And the key to keeping the temperatures comfortable on Pegasus for the whole mission is power. Power to cool things down when they get too hot and heat things up when they get cold. Most of the spacecraft we use in, in, in Earth orbit use solar cells. You can you take the sunlight and turn it into electricity. And that's pretty good while you're close to the sun and if you don't need too much power. But the spacecraft like Pegasus is going way, way out in the solar system. You know, the sun will be almost just a dot. So you, you can't use solar power. So you really have no option but to go for some form of nuclear power source, nuclear fission possibly, or, you know, given that this is further in the future, a nuclear fusion power source. Uh, the advantage of that is if you've got working nuclear fusion, you should have no shortage of power. Um, power is always a good thing to have. Putting all these requirements together, a design for Pegasus emerged. This leviathan of a ship was big enough to carry enough food, water and oxygen to sustain a crew of five for six years, the recycling systems to keep their environment habitable, a centrifuge system to simulate gravity and the power generators to support all these systems. Inspired by the need to do a job and built in workshops across the world and by digital artists in the UK, our spacecraft was born. <laughs>